to the all-century team. We now continue with the greatest pitchers of the century. They called him the big train, Walter Johnson, and he was unquestionably one of the greatest pitchers of all time. Maybe the best. If you've had the privilege of seeing old clips of Johnson throwing, it's amazing that he could pitch over 90 miles an hour with that easy sidearm motion. But because it was so easy and so deceptive, batters at the time said that all they could do was hear the ball as it whistled past their bats. It just kind of exploded. This amazing achievement will probably never be approached. Johnson has more shutouts than the top three active shutout leaders combined. Walter Johnson, as far as I'm concerned, was the greatest pitcher in baseball history. In my opinion, and the opinion of many others, he accomplished more for his teams than any pitcher in the history of the game. Physically, I'm going to try and beat you. If that fails, my mental part of the game takes over. And if that is all falling apart and that's not happening, my emotions come into play. And I've been emotional times on the mound. I'm trying to elevate my game. Clemens has set a major league record for strikeouts in a game. 20. one of those guys that you really want to get him because uh, all the intensity in the game, but then you feel so frustrated because <laughs> you can't. Roger Clemens becomes the 11th Major League pitcher to hit the 3,000 mark. When you win an individual award like that, it's really not an individual award. I had a lot of guys make me look good and make me shine. Lawrence Vaughn was pretty special. A stylish left-hander, if anybody ever fit that description, it was Spawny, not only with the array of pitches that he threw, but he had a, a classic wind-up and a great pickoff move. Spawn was by himself, you know, he won 363 games, and he won 20 games 13 years. You know, that's almost unheard of. Though he didn't get his first win till age 25, Spawn pitched for more than two decades. And with each passing year, his resolve grew. When I got to be an advanced age, my ball club was thinking in terms of replacing me with a younger left-hander. So it kind of spurred me on. Baseball was so good to me that I had the opportunity to play in the big leagues for 21 years. I wouldn't want to play in any other era than the one I did. We had fun playing, and uh, I wouldn't change a thing. Lefty Grove could throw hard. He had a good fastball. We pitched against each other, and I lost to him one to nothing. It was an honor. I enjoyed it every bit of it. Lefty Grove was the most revered and dominant pitcher of the 20s and 30s. Lefty was one of a kind. He was overpowering and such a vicious competitor. They talk about 100 miles an hour. I think he threw that ball 200 miles an hour. Look like a pea coming up there. Lefty Grove won nine ERA titles in an era which was very heavy on offense, where entire teams batted 300 in the 1930s. If I was going to pick one left-handed pitcher in baseball, he's the best I have ever seen. Christy Mathewson was the first great superstar of the 20th century. Because he had gone to college, he had been an All-America football player at Bucknell. 
because he was tall and good-looking and, and blonde in an age in which photographs were becoming increasingly important in American society, Matthewson made the game respectable. His speed and pinpoint control made Christie the National League's top pitcher in the early 1900s, a fact his numbers reflect. If you look at the 373 wins, a phenomenal total. If you look at the complete games, he completed, I think, over 80% of every game that he started. He threw 390 innings in a season and walked only 42 men. He started 11 World Series games. He finished 10 of them. His ERA in the World Series was 1.15. And in 1905, Matthewson dominated a World Series like few men since. So Christy Matthewson was somebody everybody looked up to and somebody who delivered on his expectations almost every time he took them out. Coming up next, the all-century outfielder. In the minds of us to play baseball, Hank is the king. No, he'll always be the king. Elevator to lobby. <laughs> By George. Contacts, $320. Treadmill, $800. Wonder Bra, $26. Facelift, $3,000. Being happy with who you are, priceless. There are some things money can't buy. For everything else, there's MasterCard. Happily accepted, most everywhere. All God's children get weary when they grow. Hi, I'm Bill Gaither. You're going to love the entire home video from my friend Rory Feek, entitled Gentleman. A faded jean, farmer tan, work boots, callous hand, redneck, blue collar, hard work and gentleman. Filmed before a live audience at his Tennessee farm. Call the number on your screen to order Rory Feek. Gentleman for only $24.95 plus shipping and handling. Order right away and you will also receive the companion CD at no additional charge. To order, visit Gaither.com or call the number on your screen and receive a money back guarantee. It's one out and the tying run is on second. Woodruff facing the top of the order. Capacity crowd here today and they're all on their feet. Woodruff sets, looks. Here comes the pitch to Gregory. Hit hard. Hit hard to right field. Panero is digging for it. Going back. He's going to have to play it off the wall. And they're waving a runner home. Here comes the throw. He may get him. He got him. He got him. What a throw. What a no matter where you are, with official Major League Baseball products, you're always a little closer to the game. What a throw. A message from Major League Baseball.